but above all else that in his opinion, the work of... Hello viewers, what I'll call here. This is an uh, old British wireball protection relay from a substation. It was previously used uh, just to protect an 11 kV feeder. So as you can see, these uh, electromechanical relays, got one on the red face, one on the blue face, and one on the earth fault protection. So uh, I'm going to take the cover off to make it a bit clearer how these things work. They're actually very cool relays and uh, they work on similar principle as an uh, electromechanical kilowatt hour meter. At the rear of the relay there's the wiring. Uh, we're gonna concentrate on one segment of it because I'm uh, planning to use this as a protection relay on my high current experiments so it will trip the contactor when I'm blowing shit up with, instead of blowing circuit breakers. I concentrate here on uh, one segment of the relay that's overcurrent in this example. I'm not sure if you can see, but it got contacts S1, S1, S2, S2, current ML. So that is your current supply from your CT, 5 ampere. Normally, red is the tripping contact K1, K3, so that will trip. Um, the tripping call of the circuit breaker and orange wires will usually use SCADA. So, get some close ups of the labels. Had to push the wires out of the way, but this uh, S1 S1 uh, string of contacts. You can see the S2 contacts, SCADA contacts. And with a bit of luck, you can see the M and the L that are the CT. Contacts in the Colors 2C13, that is uh, red face, 33 and 53, that's red, yellow, blue phases. We'll lift the cover of the device and we we'll have a look on the inside of the device. Beautifully made British quality. Okay, here we can see the three inner devices and they all have a Ferrari's disc. A bit more in detail. I set that one up quite high so it has to roll for quite a while. So these devices are actually uh, can be set for a time delay, etc. Try to get a good view on this device without um, getting shade. So, firstly, with Duke Overcurrents, this is on the red face and on the blue face in this particular situation. Uh, got a plug setting set at 100%. So, if this feeder was rated for 400 ampere, for example, at 100% of the load, 400 ampere, the feeder will come on close situation that the relay is starting to pick up. So, the current will need to go up beyond 400 ampere, maybe 420, that the relay will pick up and the disc starts to rotate slowly and um, it will start moving. Start moving, start moving, start moving, start moving, and eventually we'll trip the flag. You realize it's on an angle, so it's not fully happy. Here we have the overcurrent plug setting device, set at 100%. So in case of a 400 ampere feeder at 100%, um, the relay comes very close and starting to pick up excess current and will trip the particular feeder. These plugs can be set in different settings. They come out like this. They can go on a different setting. That means that all the relay settings are completely changed now. It could go 50%. Um, so you have a bit of flexibility with the CTs. So 400 and 5, you set it at 50, it could technically do 200 ampere and it will trip the relay. I'll put it back where it belongs. This is the time multiplier that will make the uh, relay. Um, now I say that wrong. Hang on. That's the time multiplier. So when the critical current is reached, that's the time 0.1 between sit between 0.1 and 0.2 seconds that the relay has to uh, operate. So the disc will turn and it will trip the mechanism. I'll zoom out to show it a bit uh, more in depth. 
So when the critical count is reached, the disc will start spinning and it will trip the flag and hence the contacts have closed which you can actually see on the left hand side, a little contact, I'll try to get a better shot of it. I'll reset this again. This lever I'm touching with my hand is actually geared to the disc and will operate the contacts. Hope you can see the contacts. There we have the device which operates the lever and the flag is topped out. As you can see there's two contact bridges. Contact one, two, three, four. And as a little brass or beryllium copper will close these contacts together, hence an operation of the D device is achieved. And all these three elements in this relay work on the same principle more or less. Um, so we've got the two overcurrents on the outer legs and then the earth fault. In this particular case it's set at 10%. If I pull this plug out you can see it a bit better. 10% setting. So on a 400 ampere feeder for example, 10% is 40 ampere. So if an insulator is or broken and the line is down on the ground, you need more or less 40 ampere for this device to operate. Works exactly the same, it's just a different setting. And it also relies on 5 ampere. Some relays work on 1 ampere, uh, it just varies, uh, depends how long the cable runs are and the likes. Here we've got one of the nameplate uh, data on the relay TJV, made by Wirewall. Camera picks it up and there's not too much wind noise. Beautifully made devices. Now these days uh, a lot of these relays are replaced with uh, numerical devices. They are just electronic and you program them with a computer and you tell them what to do. One second, point one second, point five second, whatever, and the device will operate. Uh, reliability advice: these relays uh, will go fine for 30 to 40 years, no problems. And um, yeah. Electronic stuff you never know, electronics can go suspect. I'll make a part two on this device. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Rodalco, and uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned. There's a comparison uh, between a relay and a kilowatt hour meter. The disc in a kilowatt hour meter is driven by a current call and a voltage call. Uh, protection relay is driven by two current calls set in. Uh, a phase shift to create a rotation on the disc and uh, the disc is held back by a uh, spring. I hope it's visible here, I sent this uh, setting at point 4. The disc normally sits here and it gives it the amount of movement 0.4 of a second. See the lever on the left, Let go in a bit better. I've got the meter sideways so it's not fully happy. But the disc is uh, pulled back by the spring, which I'll show you here from this point here. Well, this bouncer, you can see the spring vibrate, the spring sits here. And that will pull the disc uh, back, so the disc is not able to make a full turn. It just goes a certain amount within the limit, and then it will drop back. Let's try to reset that again. Beautifully made engineering. I'm going to set this up on a power supply and then uh, We'll get it to work electrically. Here you can see the spring from the top. I hope the camera picks it up. Great quality.